Today, what I wanted to do was go out and talk about the Vancouver Canucks and one of the more underrated guys that Patrick Alvin has brought onto the team. Now, you know him, you love him already, mostly. I guess you do if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan. I don't know anybody watching and cheering for this team that would adamantly dislike the player at topic here. But if you read the title and you saw the thumbnail, you know today we are talking about Kiefer Sherwood. Because when it comes to Kiefer Sherwood, I feel like he has been one of the more under-the-radar guys that the Vancouver Canucks ended up acquiring this previous offseason, mostly because of the way he was supposed to be used by this team. The Vancouver Canucks signed Sherwood to a two-year contract worth $1.5 million a year. It's not the cheapest deal in the world, but it's definitely not expensive. And heading into the season, a lot of people were saying, okay, Sherwood's probably going to get, like, bottom six minutes, he's going to be a fourth-line guy, he's going to be in the lineup, he's going to contribute and make things harder for the opponents, yada, yada, yada. The best part about that is, though, Sherwood had himself a pretty interesting offensive touch as well. As noted by many Predators fans who had been paying attention to this guy the past few years, Sherwood has an underrated ability to snipe the puck, and we had spoken about that at length in several videos. We talked about how Sherwood could provide some offense from the bottom six, and I think a lot of Canucks fans kind of internalize that, and they're like, okay, great, you can do a lot of things. But once the regular season began, the first three games came and went, and this is where Kiefer Sherwood just kind of fell into that mold. Hey, he's agitative, he's getting, let's say, 12-ish minutes a game, and he's doing his job. He's fine in the bottom six, right? Bottom six, bottom six, bottom six. But then, the Vancouver Canucks did a really interesting thing. They started winning. And in their winnings, this is where Sherwood started to produce some points. Sherwood only has two points in five games this year, yes, a goal and an assist, but the two points that he had scored were both from the Philadelphia and Florida victories. It also should be noted that Sherwood has been hitting the lights out of everything that moves. Sherwood, in the first game of the season, had three hits against the Calgary Flames, six hits against the Philadelphia Flyers, four hits against the Tampa Bay Lightning, but then, after the Canucks started winning... Sherwood had 10 hits against the Florida Panthers, and then 9 hits against the Philadelphia Flyers the other day, too. This guy has started to become an absolute wrecking ball, on top of getting a whole bunch of shots per game, and even scoring a beautiful goal in the Philadelphia contest as well. The goal that he scored was exactly what was advertised out of him. Teddy Bluger won the faceoff in the offensive zone, he played the puck over to Sherwood, Sherwood just grabbed it, locked it, loaded it, and then fired top cheese. That's exactly what we had talked about. The guy has an underrated sniping ability as a right-handed forward that's got a really good agitative edge. We had seen a few Predators fans saying things like, hey, I'm kind of sad to see him go. When he left the Nashville Predators signing a contract with Vancouver, this guy works his butt off. He's always making things difficult for the opponents, even in the plays where there isn't any play going on during the whistles. He's kind of getting up in his opponent's faces. He's smiling while he's taunting them and he's crackling jokes and he's making their lives a little bit more difficult shift by shift. Not to mention the hits. I mean, who gets 10 hits in a game and then follows that up with a nine hit performance and a goal? Kiefer Sherwood is doing things on this Vancouver Canucks team that I honestly don't think we have seen since, I don't know, like, think about all the other grinders that have been there in the bottom six in Vancouver. Okay, Tyler Mott was there, but I don't necessarily think of Tyler Mott as having, like, an agitative edge. He was a really hard-working, four-checking, bottom six guy, and he just played very good hockey, but, like, I don't think he made other opponents angry. You have the Antoine Roussels, who could do similar things, but Roussels' mobility definitely slowed up towards the end of his Vancouver Canucks tenure, although he was, like, as much of a pest as you could get. But it's tough to be that when you can't move as well. Plus, Antoine Roussel had not really the strongest offensive capability to his game either. You go back in the day, I mean, what? Bottom six guys during the end of the Sedin years? Uh... Beagle, Brad Richardson, Mike Santarelli, Sean Mathias? No, none of these guys were really, like, agitative. I think you'd have to go back to maybe the 2011 team. You have Rafi Torres, you've got Maxime Lapierre, 
Torres was a big body, though, so he's a lot more of a different profile. Kiefer Sherwood, I actually saw this comparison made on the R Canucks subreddit. Some people were talking about the idea of Sherwood being some sort of a Maxime Lapierre revival. I can't be the only one who sees this. Also, by the way, it's kind of funny how today we have two videos on the channel talking about Maxime Lapierre, of all people. He made some comments about the Montreal Canadiens trade situation. Here's some of the comment replies on the R Canucks thread. Kiefer Sherwood is a pest for sure, but they called him Yappy Lappy for a reason. The dude never shut up and got under everyone's skin, like a Barnaby Light. Another comment says that I think Sherwood's got more game, more skill, and underrated playmaking in Sherwood. Sherwood's got more offensive upside than Lappy, but Lappy's got the edge on the defensive side and his crap-eating grin. And ultimately, with the way the NHL is nowadays, where offense is a lot more easy to come by than it was 10 years ago, for example, we are seeing point totals getting higher, goal scorers scoring more goals, save percentages getting lower. Maxime Lapierre played in an era where goal support just wasn't as necessary out of bottom six guys. You had some players in the NHL whose jobs in the league were just straight up to just be big, be physical, and just hit guys. Now, if you're physical and you hit guys and you're a bulldog and you forecheck hard, it doesn't necessarily guarantee an NHL spot, especially on a team like Vancouver, where guys like Vasily Podkolzin, for example, guys like Sheldon Dries or Phil DiGiuseppe, they can go, they can compete, but they just weren't necessary for this team. There were too many other guys who can do more. And Kiefer Sherwood is one of those guys who can do more. He can do a lot of the forechecking, he can do a lot of the dirty work, but he can also score. And it's really interesting to note that dynamic out of a bottom six player whose offensive leaning presence is really boosting those around him in that bottom six. Teddy Bluger of course, he's going out there getting some points, he had scored a really nice goal to open up the year, and he had himself that assist on the Sherwood marker. Bluger's getting points, but nobody would have said that Bluger would have been one of the top guys in point production if they had to guess to open up the season. You just gotta think, man, when everybody else comes back and it's all healthy, let's say Elias Pettersson gets back up to speed. You have yourselves Pettersson, DeBrusque, and... I don't know, insert another name. Ah, let's just say Sprong for now. And then you have Miller Besser, and then maybe Suter. I don't know, Archdeep Baines, whomever else. Bluger gets reunited with Garland and Joshua whenever he comes back, and then Sherwood on the fourth line with Niels Hoglander, and you got Danton Heinen thrown in there too? Okay, maybe play Heinen with Besser and Miller and have Suter on the fourth line. It's a crazy forward core. Patrick Alvin, my gosh. Underrated acquisitions here, baby. The Vancouver Canucks are in an amazing spot with their guys. Sure, there are still more games to be had where we can see more chemistry be brought up and establish itself. It's still early in the season after all, so not any of these guys are going to be perfect, especially right now when you acknowledge that like, for example, Elias Pettersson had 10 points in the first five something games of the season last year. I think there was a Jeff Patterson tweet that talked about this, but Pedersen now? What has he got? Like, two points? He's not really doing all too well. But the rest of the Canucks core around him is pulling their weight and bringing this team back into the dub column. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Kiefer Sherwood as a Vancouver Canucks ad. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 9. And, bye.